G'day educators, I'm Troy Waller, a Microsoft Learning Delivery Specialist. Welcome to our webinar, Online Professional Learning for Teachers Using the Microsoft Educator Center, also known as the MEC. Today, I have Sonia Delafos from Microsoft in Seattle, who manages the MEC, and she's gonna tell us all about how to use the MEC to improve student outcomes with relevant trainings you can easily apply in your classroom. She's also gonna explain how the MEC can be used by teachers and PD facilitators to use Microsoft technology efficiently in the classroom while also earning professional development hours, how to earn badges and certificates upon completion of these courses and learning paths, and also how to generate a transcript of your successes to share with your school or your teacher registration board. Yes, that's right. Because the MEC courses meet the ATSL standards, you can count these courses you do online towards your teacher registration board PD requirements. I'm also going to have a great group of teachers from around the country to act as a panel, and they'll be asking questions of Sonia a little later on. So let's get right to it, shall we? So hi, Sonia, how you doing? Hi, I am really excited to be here with all of you. Um, coming from you from probably pretty close to as far away as you can get in Seattle, in Washington State. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks. Excellent. And it's wonderful to have you. So, Sonia, um, can I ask you, what's your role? What do you do? And what does that look like? What's it? What's a day in the life? Oh, gosh, every day is totally different. But <laughs> basically, I manage all of our educator engagement programs for Microsoft. So my job is to really help teachers, um, K through 12 especially, learn how to use our tools, but not just how do you use them, but how do you use them with best practices in mind? How do you take what we know is best practice in kind of an analog classroom and add the digital to amplify it? And so um, I run a program called the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program and the Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert Program, as well as the Trainer Program. And um, I taught for 12 years. I was in professional development for at least another 10 of those and um, professional development is my passion for teachers helping support them to learn what they need to learn and so really um, I put together the programs and then I trust Troy and all of the people like Troy all over the world to um, help share those programs with the world. Wonderful, good. And now you did you did hint that you have an educator background and yeah. that you were a teacher. T tell us a little bit about that. What, what's your journey been? Yeah. So it all started when I wanted to be a high school band teacher. <laughs> Never did that. But um, so I majored in music and education. And then as I watched my friends become band teachers, I decided I really didn't want to deal with. And here in the U.S., it's all like marching band and band for like basketball games and I decided I'd rather really wanted to focus on the classroom. So after I got my degree there, I went back and got my um, certification to teach K through eighth grade, kindergarten through year eight basically. So that's like 13, 14. And I taught at a middle school. So I taught sixth, seventh and eighth graders, ages roughly 12 through 14. Uh, math, I taught algebra, pre-algebra, sixth grade math, and I also taught music. Um, and that was in 1994 when the internet was just coming to life. Um, so I quickly discovered how much technology could help me make my job a little easier, even though there was a lot of upfront learning to do. I discovered if I did that upfront learning, it would make my job as a teacher easier and I could connect to more of my students. So I taught myself front page and built a whole website for my classroom where my kids could access their lessons. I actually even taught my sixth graders instead of coming to me and saying, what did we do yesterday? They would go to a computer in the back of the room if they didn't have one at home and say, I saw we did this yesterday and I downloaded what I needed to do. So um, it was really just ensuring that my students had a personalized learning experience, working hard. And so from there, I went into professional development. Like I wanted to affect more than just 150 students in my class. So I joined a district of 50 schools. I can't even remember, I think it was like 25,000 students at the time. Um, rolling out, we had LMSs. We rolled out a one-to-one -one Windows program with, um, uh, with inking. We, I basically, my team of six and I were in charge of really skilling up the two or 3,000 teachers in that system um, with a robust technology. From there, I went and was an assistant principal and was also a technology coordinator at a different district. So um, 
along the line, I kind of fell into what Microsoft was offering teachers. I was a huge fan of it. I fell in love with OneNote in 2007. That's what really hooked me as a math teacher. I saw the massive potential that had to really help my students. And from there, I uh, went into uh, so I got I started working with Microsoft US and doing presentations for customers and writing content for training. And then this job came up five years ago and I said, why not? Why not work with not just the teachers in the US? Why not work with all the teachers in the world? So here I am. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, well, I might throw to you now for your presentation so you can talk to us all about the Microsoft Educator Center, which um, I, you know, I'm constantly steering teachers to this because it's just, you know, it's wonderful from a sort of self directed approach as well as the school directed approach, but I'm sure you're going to tell us all about that. So let's start with. Why even worry about professional development? Well, Lots of studies show that professional development is key in successful digital transformation and that 71% of educators say that adoption of new initiatives, it could be a new reading curriculum, it could be a new math curriculum, it doesn't matter, without proper training or professional development is the primary reason for workplace stress. And we also know that teacher effectiveness is the largest factor affecting student outcomes outside of family backgrounds. So, we need to make sure that if, like I discovered when I was working in schools, if we tried to deploy technology or reading curriculum or anything without really good, thoughtful, long-term professional development, it never picked up and then it gets dumped out the window and something new comes on. And so um, coming to Microsoft five years ago, I really wanted to make sure that we had a great repository of useful courses, lessons, things like that, that teachers could use so that they could pick up and do just in time training whenever they need it on whatever topic they want because teachers are all over the board. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that our um, kind of repository, which is now called the Microsoft Educator Center, um, was content focused. There was active learning involved. Again, it's that's kind of on the part of the learner. They have to choose to be active. There can be collaboration. There's models of effective practice. We have coaching and expert support, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, there's time for feedback and reflection and that it's sustained duration. So in a school system, you don't want to just. Two days before school starts, have everyone do like two days of training and then say bye, have a good year. That doesn't work. So MEC or the Microsoft Educator Center is our um, support system to help teachers across the globe um, get started with learning about whatever they want, Microsoft related, <laughs> um, and that they can pick it up and do it whenever and wherever they are. Um, but ideally, MEC even works better when it's incorporated into collaborative professional learning groups and embedded throughout the school year, not just uh, one teacher doing it on their own. That works, but when you can get a whole community doing it together, it's even better. So on MEC, education.microsoft.com, we have courses, which are single courses that you can just take. Um, most of the durations are about an hour, but that's if you read every word and watched every video um, and you were kind of an average reader. Um, so it could be more than an hour, it could be less than an hour. Um, we just roughly guesstimate um, what it would take for someone to really take thoughtful time to consume that course. Um, and then we also put a bunch, a lot of times we take multiple courses and put them into a learning path so that the teachers can go through in a suggested order. However, we don't want to take away the ability to teachers to for teachers to be able to pick their own path. Um, and so that's why we have it pretty open um, and not like, all right, everybody has to take this course and everyone has to take this course because that's not what good adult learning should look like. So the other great thing is we have a transcript. So as teachers complete the courses, they can actually print out their transcript or save the PDF of their transcript and share that with others. Um, for every course you complete, 
you get, um, if you go into your profile, you'll see all the badges of every course you've completed and you'll see a little button that allows you to view details in the certificate. And so I've seen teachers actually print out every certificate and cover their entire wall with all their certificates. I've also seen um, schools where they, in their staff room, they have kind of a leaderboard where people are printing out the badges and they're um, doing kind of that. So they've made it like a fun school activity, a fun learning activity. So, um, but I can talk all day about it. What's better is when I dive into MEC and show you some of the resources that will make a big difference. Okay, so here we are at education.microsoft.com. The top will eventually change, like this is always what's at the top of people's minds, and you can click here and get started and see what at this time of the year, uh, what, what distance learning is about. We also have new and noteworthy carousel that kind of um, goes through here with the latest and greatest. If you scroll down, you can see uh, more resources. Um, we've got this great program, which I'll talk about in a little bit, the Ask a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert Program. Actually, I'll just jump to it now. Why not? Which is a great program, which we have a lot, some of our amazing, we have nearly 20,000 Microsoft Innovative Educator Experts this year. And um, a number of them have volunteered to offer tutoring to teachers that are struggling. And so you can access that through MEC as well. Um, we did a global learning week in a few months ago, whenever that was, I don't remember, but you can watch it on demand here um, and more learning paths. So this is kind of a landing page, but the menu up here is really where you wanna dig into. So first under training, we have courses, learning paths, and then webinars and other events. So if you just go into courses, you'll see every course we have potentially available. And let's pretend you're new to Teams. You could type in Teams and you'll get every course that mentions Teams or has Teams as a tag. And that's still a lot of choices. Um, and it's hard to tell. Just here's a little hint. If you see courses that have this graphic that have like the blue, the tree and the little file cabinet here, um, those are all presenter led trainings. So those are materials that schools could download and use the materials to deliver instructor led content because um, all of these are on demand. So let's pretend I brand new to Teams, Transform Learning with Microsoft Teams is where I want to start. I can see the objectives. Um, we try to tie them to the ISTE standards just because those are fairly global um, and use those and other standards tie really nicely to the ISTE standards. You can see if it's worth the badge or not, and then you can jump into the course. And so the course looks like this where there's a mixture of text and here's reflection. So we want to encourage learners to actually interact with the learning. Uh, in this case, there's a reflection moment where you want we want you to sit and think about that. Don't just click next. You can click next here and um, read some text. Here's a video. The other nice thing is all of this table of contents lets you jump. So let's say I already took this course and I couldn't remember. There was something about announcements, but I couldn't remember what it was. I can click make, I could just jump right to this section and watch it again. And I, I actually even use this a lot um, because I sometimes forget things since I'm not in the classroom anymore. Um, I don't necessarily always remember how to create track and review assignments in a class. So here it is right here. So that's great. And then once you're finished, there's always a quiz. And when you take, um, this you've got choices and it's always important to read all of them <laughs> before selecting um, and then you can submit your answer and you get instant feedback i got green and a checkbox, so i got it right and i just keep going and once i've completed the quiz then hopefully i will have you need to complete with an 80 percent correct you can take it again and again and again until you get it correct um, and then you earn your badge um, so let's go back to learning paths. Like I said, uh, learning paths are collections of courses that we've put together. So uh, in, 
this last year we created this fostering a dynamic remote learning environment so you can see it's got three courses in it i have completed the first one which is why i have a little green check mark there i can see uh if i want i can retake the course if i want to go back to it um and i still have two more to work on here and then once i've done all three of these i'll have earned three badges plus this extra learning path badge so that's kind of cool as well um, and uh, we also have, let me just go back to courses. If you type in hybrid, um, we have lots of hybrid learning courses coming out now. So for those of you that are in class, we hope you're teaching with a hybrid model, even if all of your kids are in class, because that way they get the best of the technology and the best of that kind of asynchronous life along with the synchronous face to face classroom. So um, we have. A number of courses coming out on this, and if you scroll down, you'll see all the resources we use to put this together because everything we do is tied to pedagogy because it's not just like use teens. It's how do you use it to connect with your students? How do you use it to provide personalized learning for all the different learners in your classroom. If you have 30 kids in your class, you have 30 different learning styles and you probably have 30 different levels of where they read, 30 different levels of how they process thinking. Um, and so what that's where technology can really drill in and that's what our courses are designed to help you with. Um, lesson plans are a lot of fun. We have all of our hacking STEM lesson plans. Minecraft Education Edition and Skype in the Classroom lesson plans are here. So these are all lesson plans that have been created by Microsoft. Le uh, Hacking STEM, if you don't know what that is, those are affordable project based activities. So parents could actually go here and download this and do these with their kids. They're all tied to Excel. It's pretty awesome. Um, Minecraft Education Edition takes you into the Minecraft space. Um, to learn more there. And then Skype in the classroom takes you to the Skype in the classroom place where you can actually take students on virtual field trips. You can do collaborations with other teachers. You can um, connect your kids with kids anywhere else in the world. It's quite amazing. And so there's all kinds of things with how to get started there. So, um, and again, we also have programs. So if you want to read up on our Microsoft Innovative Educator program, which are the programs I run, so I highly recommend looking at them. Um, here's a little brief overview of how to become an MIE, and I challenge all of you to become an MIE if you're not yet. That's all you need to do is join MEC and complete two hours of training. Um, if you are responsible for training other people, join our trainer program. And of course, once a year, we have our big MIE expert um, recruitment um, season. And so if you want to be part of an amazing group of learners and you will hear from our panelists who are all MIE experts, I believe. So um, that's going to be, that's there as well. So there's just all kinds of things on here. And then of course there's the resources and resources are um, when there's not quite enough for a full course, but we want to tell you something. Um, so for example, we have a page all about the immersive reader. Oh, there's me and Mike. Um, and um, it talks about what is the immersive reader? Here's a PDF. This page is a PDF. What does it do? Where is it available? So this is an example of a resource. It's not a full course. There's lots of information. There's videos. There's things that you can take with it. So resources are super valuable as well, but a lot of people don't realize that they're there. So that is pretty much the overview of MEC. Okay, that's wonderful, Sonia. Thank you very much. It's really good to see um, all the potential that teachers can access for their own professional development and also school leaders. What I'd like to do now, Sonia, is I'd like to um, introduce our um, panel of teachers. We've got teachers from around the country here in Australia today, which I'm really excited to have. Um, we're going to start with Jody. So um, Jody has a question and I'm going to throw to her now. Hi, um, hi Sonia, hi Troy. Uh, so my name is Jody Gordon and I'm the Director of Professional Learning at the Australian Science and Mathematics School in Adelaide, South Australia. Um, my question is, um, in our school environment, we have quite a number of relief and pre-service teachers um, who come and go from our site and work at our site. 
um, and often they ask me about how do I get professional learning um, with technology and um, and then when I explain about the MEC, um, they get really excited and interested to hear about it. Um, and then they ask, well, can anyone join, even if I'm a relief teacher or a pre-service teacher? Um, and so I just wondered if you could explain a little bit more about how they can access the MEC because it generates a lot of interest. Jody, that is such a great question. Um, MEC is open to everybody. So even parents that are homeschooling or parents that have found themselves suddenly homeschooling, even though they didn't choose that, um, and I encourage everybody to join MEC. Um, so relief teachers, um, we have instructional aides and we call them paraeducators up here that work um, alongside the special ed teachers up here. Um, everybody, principals, district, like the people that work in your district office, um, that kind of so everyone should join MEC because everything gets to come with you. My one little hint is that when you sign in, don't use necessarily your organization ID um, because if you ever leave your organization, uh, you'll lose what you did. <laughs> so, and there's no easy way right now to change that. So if you use a consumer Microsoft account, that will make sure all of your records go with you. So that is awesome. The other thing I wanted to share is we actually have a learning path called the Student Teacher Education Program. And this is specifically for new teachers, teachers who are coming to become teachers. Um, it's meant actually for, uh, I would say, universities who have these programs already built into them, but I always recommend new teachers to go through this anyway. So this page explains um, about it for university, but anybody can take the online learning path here, which is very long. It's very robust. Um, and so if someone wanted to like really get good at everything, um, that student teacher education program is a great place to start. Wonderful. Good. All right. So our next question comes from Amy, who is also in South Australia. Good morning, Jody. Good morning, Sonia. Good morning, Troy. Um, it's nice to see you. I'm the leader of the Centre for Deaf and Hard of Hearing here at Adelaide High School in South Australia. Um, my question is, we've been doing a lot of work in MEC and I know there's a lot of programs you keep updating or bringing in new things and I keep forgetting to go back and check regularly. So yeah. how can we easily find out what is being added? Like, is there a way to get notifications? Um, is there just like a little box that pops up? So how can you help let us know what's happening? Sadly, there's no like easy breezy notification system in here for what's new since you last visited. Um, I know that's on the roadmap um, somehow. Uh, the other thing that I did want to point out is at the very bottom of education.microsoft.com is a section that says sign up for our newsletter. So if you sign up for that, at least you'll get like when we do have new um, courses, we put that in the newsletter or new updates. We do put that in and those come out once a month. So that's about the best bet. And the second bet would be to make sure you follow um, us on Instagram and on Twitter because we're always tweeting about anything new in Mac um, on those two handles. Wonderful. All right, next question is coming from Catherine, who is in Melbourne. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Sonia. So interesting. Um, and I'm really enjoying um, using the MEC pathways um, and done quite a few of them. Um, I particularly like the, um, the recent one I've done, Skills for the Future, Voice and Collaboration. Um, that one was really good because it brought together some apps, some Teams and OneNote, you know, starting to blend things together. So are there any other future plans to develop more of these integrated sort of? Yeah, programs? so our hybrid learning courses, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> our hybrid learning courses are all going to be about how do you app smash, basically, how do you take forms and teams and Flipgrid and like our partners like Wakelet and, and Prezi and Pear Deck and how do you take all these different things and put them together for an amazing classroom. So um, definitely check out the hybrid and remote learning classes for that because that talks about that a lot. 
Um, we're also looking at trying to potentially this year um, put in some courses on teaching English language learners, which will definitely be a lot of like how to use the different apps specifically for that. Um, and so those are like, I think I'm glad to hear that you find those really useful because um, I think I totally agree. Like, I think a, a course that's about how do you use all these things for this educational purpose um, is super meaningful. So um, I'm happy also to take other suggestions through Troy. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, our next question comes from Ben, and Ben is also in Victoria. Hi, thank you, Troy, and hello, Sonia. Um, I'm Ben Eilenberg. I'm from Silverton Primary School. Um, my question is, You've mentioned a lot and the hybrid pathways, but it's I was going to ask what are some more new pathways being developed, especially with the changing due to the global pandemic within schools and the way that we're working and teaching with students? Yeah, I think um, we're working on building a lot more resource pages. So on the home page right now, um, today, this changes. So this might not look like this when you get here. Um, just this is a constantly changing and surfacing new things. Um, this And this carousel is supposed to always have the latest in here. So we've been working on building out a lot of resource pages to really help, like this one specifically for school leaders. How do you really rethink the school day? Um, that as well, like this whole getting started with distance learning page has all kinds of distant learning for school leaders, for educators, for higher ed, for families. Um, and so that's really what we're working on too, is building out a lot of like holistic resource pages that take that are on a theme such as remote learning um, and putting them together into one spot so you have like a place that you can go find everything you need. Wonderful. Catherine, you have another question. Um, what are the key benefits of the staff engaging with the MEC learning space and how does it empower their practice? That's a great question. Um, I've seen a lot of different ways that teachers are using Mac as an empowerment tool. I've seen it where one, one of my favorite stories was a teacher, her long time school provided device, which was not a Windows device, died. And she was like, I want something that's gonna help me teach. And she researched and she somehow discovered like inking devices and OneNote. And she decided, I, I need to learn this OneNote thing. So um, she took, she found Mac and took every course related to OneNote. She contacted um, the stores team actually is a great place to get extra support. So Troy and his team can provide training and support. We have training partners that can provide support, but the stores also provide a lot of training and support as well. Now that even and now they're all online, so you can access store help from anywhere in Australia. Um, but so she ended up writing grants and within a year, all her kids had digital inking devices and they were fourth graders, like year, 10 year old, roughly 10, 11. Um, so that's one thing. So she just used it to empower her to change her classroom on her own in a situation where she didn't have access to resources. Other schools I've seen like the entire school embrace MEC where they say every teacher is gonna become an MIE and um, each teacher, not only do you have to become an MIE, each teacher has to pick a tool that they are going to be expert in. And every like Wednesday, um, and this is when the school was face to face, the, the teachers would go to the staff room and they would pick a course that they were focusing on and they would project the course at the front of the room and they'd all take the course together and then they'd all pull their devices out and take the assessment together. And then they'd even talk about the assessment They say, hey, what did you get for this question? What do you get for that question? And I think that is a beautiful way. I don't think that's cheating. I think that is a fantastic way to make the learning a powerful learning device. And in today's world of connecting remotely, you could easily do it in teams, whereas uh, a school leader, <clears throat> I could go into my staff team site and I could assign like a course maybe um, to my staff and then my staff could take the course and then show their certificate or something like that, but make it fun. I think the trick is to make it fun, uh, make it like a challenge, make it 
a little bit of a competition maybe without getting too heated. Um, and so I see, again, just every possible way that teachers can use to empower. Um, oh, one of my friends just got a new job in a brand new school district. And she goes, oh my gosh, starting Monday, I have to know how to use Teams. Can you send me every course that I should take? And she spent her entire Saturday with her coffee and her pajamas taking as many courses as she could so she could get up to speed for her new district. So um, I think that's another great example. Excellent. Ben, you've got another question for Sonia. Um, the question really came that if the Met is really fantastic with all the programs on it, but I suppose, is there any thoughts of embedding it in programs such as Teams where you can get on and it's just there, it's a pop up or it's an app or something like that that makes it more streamlined for all staff. That is also a great question. At this moment, the only way that you can really do that is if you, um, in your team site, add a tab that's a website tab and then point it either to a very specific course. I've actually done that with my field. Um, where I want them to learn about, like the, take the new hybrid learning course. So in Teams, I'll add that um, as a thing. There's no way for like the school leader to know automatically if the teachers have taken a course or not without the teacher sharing their transcript or sharing their certificate, um, mostly because our rules at Microsoft that say that this is a, um, teachers are signing up for this on their own, so we can't share that data with others, but um, there's lots of ways to be creative about it. So. Um, I'm still waiting to see if a school will figure out how to assign a course and then make the certificate be like the upload proof that they completed it. I think that would work really well. Very good. Amy, you've got another question. I, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of courses and I love doing the courses, but I find that because I've done so many that I forget different things about different apps. So it'd be wonderful if there is a cheat sheet for each app. Is there some way we can find a cheat sheet that sort of gives you a bit of a, a rundown on what you can do in each of the apps? We have a website that's called support.microsoft.com slash education. And one thing we're going to work on this year is making sure that each of our courses links to like whatever matching documentation is on this site. So this is where like all the how to like step by step, not pedagogy related necessarily. So um, like here in support.office.com slash education and the slash education is part because it's all education related. That way you get that way you get answers on teams related to education. And so I can actually click in here and like there's a quick start guide here. There's classroom experiences. They've linked to some of our um, courses here. Um, and so this is, again, this is my, like if you just wanna know step-by-step -step how to something quick, um, the, the support site, um, support.office.com slash education is where to go. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna work on linking these to all of our courses. Hi Sonia, yes, just another quick question if I might. Um, obviously I'm interested in professional learning and so I'm interested to hear from you. How do you find that educators and teachers are using the MEC generally? So for instance, are they using it to learn more about um, approaches to teaching or pedagogical approaches or more about you know, how do students learn and learn with technology? Um, or is it just about the technology itself? Like how do you find teachers, or what are they interested in I guess when they go to the MEC? Yeah, I think the first reason someone comes is just because like the panic of, oh my gosh, I have to teach with teams and I don't even know how to start. Or like, I think, or uh, what is this OneNote thing? Um, so I think that's usually the first reason someone comes, but then as they start poking around, they get really interested in the other deeper things. Um, so we try to, that's why we try to have like courses on all different levels, like that just how do you get started to like, a couple of the courses I'm super proud of are the two courses we did in partnership with Made by Dyslexia, um, in which it's about what is dyslexia, 
why is it important to know about how as an educator can you support students with dyslexia? I've actually even had a couple of educators that said, oh my gosh, Sonia, after I took this course, I am now convinced I'm dyslexic and I'm going to go get testing. Um, and that's why reading was so hard for me my whole life. Um, so I like I'm really proud of those types of courses we have. We build strong partnerships with lots of people to get into that thing. And so I think it's a mixture. Some people, I would say the majority of the people, like I said, come because they just need an answer or they just want some help getting started. And then once they find how friendly the mech is and how many other things are, they just start poking around and find other things. Hi, thanks. So we've been um, probably working with Microsoft for a while now and I was really excited with the MEC and I work with a group of deaf and hard of hearing students and teachers and SSOs, so school service officers in classroom support that work with our students and so one of the courses I was really excited with was the inclusive educator course. So once I started and mostly completed the course, even before I completed it, it was like, oh, I've got to get my teachers and my staff to do this because there was so much in there that we could use in different ways for our deaf and hard of hearing students. So our students spend a lot of their time um, using Auslan, which is Australian Sign Language. So I can now get the teachers to use Dictate to um, help write a transcript for that. And and that's because they've learned how to do it through their, their programs or, you know, we're using immersive reader to help our students read programs and they've all learned that through using the MEC programs. It's been fantastic having the opportunity to give the staff that information and I can keep throwing back to the MEC and saying, well, why don't you try and find something about that in their, in MEC? You know, they ask about teams, oh, I find that in MEC and then maybe you can teach everyone else. It's been a fantastic experience. Like the, the resources are just wonderful. That makes me so excited and I can't wait to share that with all of the massive team of people that work on MEC. All right, thank you, Sonia. That brings us to the end of our time. And I've got to say, this has been awesome. I, I love the fact that we've made this webinar that can be a resource for people that they could show to their schools, um, they could share with their friends, etc. So I really want to thank you for your time. I also want to thank um, our panel of teachers who came on here today to, to share, um, all from different time zones around the country. It's really wonderful. Um, so thank you very much. And guys, if you want to say goodbye to Sonia, please do, and then we'll call it a day. Thanks, Sonia. Much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sonia. Fantastic. Lots of new things coming, I'm sure. It's great. Yep. Thanks, Thank Sonia. You. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, <laughs> Sonia. It was wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, thank you guys so much. Like getting to hear from you is exactly why we at Microsoft do what we do. You are who we care about. You are the ones we work for every day. And so this has been phenomenal to talk to you and hear your questions and to be here for you. Great. Thanks, Sonia. Now, teachers, if you want access to this webinar recording or any of my other previous webinars, then please visit the URL aka.ms forward slash Troy YT. That's aka.ms forward slash Troy YT. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can stay connected. Thanks, and I'll see you next time, educators.